welcome to the lecture on types of welding distortions. So, uh, we talked about you know the introduction about the uh, welding distortion and towards the end we had also uh, you know discussed uh, or we mentioned about uh, the different types of uh, uh, welding distortions. So, we will have uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know more detailed uh, you know discussion about these uh, types of welding distortion. So, um, as we know that uh, you have uh, the distortions which are primarily of uh, these different types like uh, you have the longitudinal shrinkage which uh, is there along the longitudinal direction. So, that uh, shrinkage which take place along the longitudinal direction that is longitudinal shrinkage. Similarly, you have the uh, shrinkage in the transverse direction that will be your transverse shrinkage. Uh, then you have the uh, angular distortion, uh, longitudinal distortion bowing or bending, uh, you have uh, the uh, rotational distortion and then finally, you have buckling or twisting. So, if you try to see the uh, or feel that how these uh, you know distortion looks like. So, we can have the uh, figures of these uh, you know distortion. So, as we see that uh, in this case uh, as there will be shrinkage in, in, in this proportion. So, your ultimately you will have shrinkage along uh, the longitudinal direction. So, that will be your uh, longitudinal shrinkage. Similarly, the shrinkage which is there in the transverse direction. So, that will be uh, basically your uh, transverse shrinkage. Then uh, this is uh, you know the uh, example of uh, you know the longitudinal distortions which is uh, uh, normally taking place. We will talk about it. Uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, angular distortion is is this one because we see that this is uh, you know moving uh, at some angle. So that type of uh, distortion which is you know coming in this case. So this is uh, your uh, angular distortion. Uh, this is your uh, rotational distortion where either it, it comes in this fashion the, the, uh, or it, it, it is going away from uh, you know. Uh, so, this way so that kind of distortion is uh, known as the uh, you know rotational distortion and this is a uh, typical example of uh, the uh, you know uh, the, twist, uh, the distortion that is known as buckling or uh, twisting. So, that is uh, you know this kind this one the distortion is. So, if you uh, talk about uh, you know the uh, the distortions uh, you know in, uh, in uh, one by one. So, first of all we will talk about the uh, longitudinal distortion. Now, if you see the longitudinal distortion. So, uh, basically uh, you longitudinal not distortion it is longitudinal shrinkage. So, uh, if you talk about a normal butt weld, so you have the shrinkage which is uh, taking place one is in longitudinal direction another in transverse shrinkage. Now, the, the shrinkage which is taking place in the longitudinal uh, direction which in the case of butt weld is uh, quite small as compared to that which takes place in the uh, transverse section. So, the you know uh, longitudinal shrinkage so, uh, that and that amount is much less uh, you know as, as compared to the uh, transverse ring case of a butt weld. So, normally it is about 1000th part. So, uh, if it is 1, so it will be um, uh, you know 1 by 1000 you know the longitudinal shrinkage if it one is the for the is the transverse shrinkage. So, it is uh, it can be quantitatively tentatively represented uh, by the formula and, and that is you know delta L is normally 3 times the, the welding current that is in amperes and then you have the length of the weld that is your uh, L that will be in uh, mm and then it will be divided by uh, you know uh, 10 raised to the power 5 uh, times uh, the thickness of uh, the plate. So, your uh, delta L is the uh, longitudinal shrinkage 
and uh, then uh, you have uh, I is the current in amperes and uh, similarly L will be the uh, length of weld. So, that will be uh, you know in mm and uh, the T will be the plate thickness. So, this is also again in mm. So, this way now if you are uh, given you know uh, you know any uh, but weld or so and, and you are to calculate the longitudinal shrinkage you can uh, use this uh, formula uh, for finding the longitudinal shrinkage. For example, if suppose uh, you are given that uh, you have a uh, 6 mm thick plate and uh, uh, they are joined. So, 6 mm thick plate and you have to do the butt joint, butt joint welding. So, you are, are you doing the uh, welding using butt joint and uh, you are using the shielded metal arc welding I, I is so ampere is 200 ampere. So, for that what will be uh, you know the uh, uh, what will be its uh, you know longitudinal shrink case. So, uh, you can uh, calculate uh, you know these uh, uh, values. So, you can have uh, for the uh, length itself. So, if you uh, calculate the uh, delta L, so that will be 3 times ampere. So, this is 200 and then you have uh, the uh, length itself whatever will be the length and then you can multiply that with uh, 10 to the power 5 into uh, 6. So, what you see that this 6 and 6 is cutting. So, you will have uh, L by 1000. So, that way uh, you can calculate you know uh, the um, longitudinal shrinkage of uh, the butt joint. Uh, you can have uh, even the um, uh, fillet weld also we can calculate the longitudinal shrinkage for the uh, fillet weld. So, if you have the uh, fillet weld. So, in the case of uh, uh, fillet weld as we know. So, the fillet weld normally you have. Uh, so, this way you have the uh, plate and uh, on this this is how it is joined. So, your uh, uh, this is your uh, you know fillet which is uh, uh, looking like this. Now, in this case uh, the fillet weld this area you know uh, cross section of the welded plates you know uh, in the uh, transverse section which is also called the straining cross section. So, that is also you know uh, important. So, uh, you have uh, two types of cross section one is your so, this one is your for the uh, plates and another is uh, for the you know welded parts. So, this is uh, your we call it as A P and this is we call it as A W. So, you know based on that uh, normally uh, we calculate the uh, you know uh, longitudinal shrinkage for the fillet weld. Now, uh, when it is ratio so uh, you know uh, is less than 20. So, for that when the when the ratio A p by A w when it is less than 20 in that case if you uh, try to calculate the uh, you know longitudinal shrinkage that is uh, given by the formula delta L will be 25 times uh, you know A w by A p. So, that is you know M m. So, this way uh, you know uh, 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 you calculate uh, the longitudinal shrinkage in the case of the uh, fillet weld. So, you can have you know uh, any uh, fillet uh, weld joint. So, if suppose you have a, a, a fillet weld uh, given like this and uh, this uh, you know dimensions are given like say th this is given as uh, 8 and this is given as uh, the uh, 6 then uh, uh, this length is also given as 8 and uh, you know this uh, thickness again is uh, 6 and this length is given as 75. So, based on that you have to calculate the uh, you know A w and A p and uh, so uh, and then uh, you have to uh, uh, find the uh, you know delta L. So, if you calculate the uh, you know A w for uh, uh, this material. So, there have two fillet welds. So, it will be uh, 2 times the area here. So, you have the uh, this is a triangular area. So, 2 times the if you calculate the area it will be half into uh, both the uh, you know 
base and perpendicular is 8 into 8. So, it will be 8 into 8. So, it will be you know 64 mm square all the dimensions are in the case of in, in this case are in mm. So, it will be 64 mm square. Similarly, if you cal want to calculate uh, you know the A p now. Now, A p will be uh, this is uh, your uh, 6 and this is uh, uh, your uh, you know uh, 75. So, so accordingly you will uh, calculate these uh, values. So, uh, this area will be 6 into 75 here and uh, this length is uh, 100. So, you will have uh, 6 into 100 plus 6 into 75. So, this is 600 plus it is 450. So, it will be uh, 1050 mm square. So, a p upon a w w if you calculate it will be uh, you know 1050 upon uh, 64. So, it is uh, you know uh, something uh, between 16 and 17. So, it is uh, somewhere close to 16.4. So, it is less than 20. So, we can use the formula for the fillet weld that is delta L uh, that will be uh, you know 25 times A w upon A p. So, um, uh, you have uh, uh, 25 times uh, 64 by uh, you know uh, 1050. So, so that way it will be uh, you know 42 and then you have a 21 and this is uh, your 42 uh, 32. So, that way it will be somewhere close to 1.52 mm. So, this way uh, we calculate uh, you know the, uh, the uh, longitudinal shrinkage uh, in the case of uh, uh, you know the uh, either the uh, uh, long bottom joint or you have the fillet joint. So, we calculate these uh, you know longitudinal shrinkage in, in, in such manner. Then uh, next comes your uh, transverse shrinkage. So, uh, so transverse shrinkage uh, basically uh, the major factor which will be causing this uh, uh, you know uh, transverse shrinkage in butt weld is uh, basically the rotational distortion and the uh, constraint. So, uh, you know uh, so these are the you know uh, two reasons uh, because of which these uh, uh, transverse shrinkage take place in welding. So, uh, if you talk about uh, you know the uh, uh, transverse shrinkage, so we have already seen that uh, when you have uh, uh, the weld bead in, in this uh, fashion. So, the shrinkage which is uh, going to take uh, come uh, you know on, on both these sides. So, this is your uh, transverse shrinkage and half of the transverse shrinkage is taking place here and half of the transverse shrinkage is taking place here. The as we discussed that uh, you have uh, you know this is uh, uh, basically there are two major factors one is the rotational distortion which is because of you know as we are seeing that. Uh, you know if you talk about the spot of uh, welding. So, uh, so you know the, the uh, you know the ahead of the arc you know the arc is moving. So, ahead of the arc you know uh, that basically unwelded portion of the joint that causes that rotational distortion and uh, accordingly you have the transverse uh, you know uh, uh, shrinkage which uh, take place. Uh, so, uh, one reason is uh, that and another is uh, the constraint. So, if you are providing more constraint in that case the shrinkage uh, transverse shrinkage is likely to be less. So, many a times uh, the constraint are also not uniform. So, so that way also it will be affecting uh, you know the uh, you know the amount of transverse shrinkage uh, uh, as it should be. So, normally when we uh, talk about the uh, transverse shrinkage so, that can be you know predicted by uh, a relationship that has been uh, suggested and that relationship is delta t that is your uh, transverse for that delta t is uh, taken and that is normally delta w divide, divided by 10 t. So, you know uh, so delta w is the basically the cross sectional area of the weld and uh, then uh, you have the T is the uh, weld thickness. So, uh, this is uh, has the unit of mm square and this is in the uh, unit of mm. So, if you have uh, any kind of uh, you know uh, uh, 
uh, well. So, you can uh, predict uh, you know the uh, the amount of uh, uh, transverse shrinkage in that weld. So, you have to basically you know, find the uh, cross sectional area of the weld. So, basically if you suppose you have uh, uh, a weld which is uh, suppose shown like uh, you know uh, you have uh, uh, such kind of weld. So, so this is the you know weld uh, which is uh, given and uh, this uh, so this dimension is about uh, 19 uh, and uh, uh, you have uh, the uh, you know this uh, um, here uh, this is uh, uh, this is the dimension here. So, this uh, uh, you know uh, and from here you have this uh, is the shape which is coming. So, that way if suppose this is the uh, geometry of and, and this side uh, you have the uh, dimension which is uh, given. Now, uh, in this case uh, now the, if you look at this uh, angle, this angle is uh, uh, supposed to be about 45 degree. So, uh, your uh, this is your uh, basically talking if you talk about uh, you know from here to this this basically is uh, the shrinkage that is this shrinkage is the uh, transverse shrinkage which is uh, uh, taking place. Now, uh, this much is uh, here it is showing out to be 6. So, this is uh, here uh, this length is uh, 6 and uh, uh, this length is uh, shown to be 3 and uh, you know uh, here also this is uh, shown to be 3. So, uh, all the dimensions are in the mm you have uh, uh, you know this. Uh, so, this is A and this is your B area. So, we are talking about the uh, different area which is you know of the uh, you know that is for. So, you have three areas basically if you talk about the uh, weld area you have three area A, B and C. So, this is your uh, C this is A and this is uh, B. So, basically if you uh, talk about uh, you know the uh, for such a problem. So, what we need to know is we have to find first of all the area of that uh, weld. So, this is one that is rectangular area which is to be calculated. So, that uh, area is this is 6 and this length is 19. So, you have uh, in this case area you have 3 in, in this uh, for finding that uh, weld area cross section of the weld you have A as is the rectangular area that is your 6 into 19. Similarly, uh, you have uh, this is your uh, the triangular area. So, again uh, you have uh, uh, you know the here also you have uh, um, this is half into this length into this length. So, that is uh, uh, given as uh, 19. So, 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 B will be half into 19 into 19. And, and this my, this one is a curve this curvature is given and given 45 degrees. So, this area will be 2 by 3 times and then you have uh, this is uh, 3 into you have 6 plus 19 into uh, plus you know uh, 3. So, this 3 also 6 plus 19 plus 3. So, that way uh, you get uh, this as uh, you know uh, you have uh, 2 by 3 into uh, 3 into 6 plus 19 plus 3. So, that way you uh, calculate you know different uh, you know the areas which we is uh, talking about that uh, weld cross section and once you get that uh, cross section. So, if you find uh, you know these values and add them. So, that uh, gives you the uh, you know uh, value of uh, about uh, 350.5 millimeter square and if you talk about the uh, T. So, T will be you know 19 plus 3. So, this is your 19 and this 3 comes here. So, it will be 22 mm. Now, you can use the formula of the transverse shrinkage. Transverse shrinkage uh, will be uh, delta T and that will be basically delta W. So, delta W is about 350.5 and uh, you have the uh, 10 times the uh, 
thickness so 10 times uh, 22. So, it is coming out to be about 1.6 mm. So, uh, this way you can have the uh, uh, calculation of the uh, you know transverse shrinkage in uh, you know in, in such cases. So, when we talk about you know the uh, transverse shrinkages in uh, you know uh, in the butt whales. So, in the butt whales basically uh, you know when we talk about uh, the different you know various welding procedures. So, how they affect on the uh, you know transverse shrinkage. So, if you have uh, the uh, if you talk about the uh, root opening. So, you know uh, if the root opening is increased in that case the uh, transverse shrinkage will uh, increase. So, so the shrinkage increases so in uh, butt wells. So, and we are also talk about uh, you know effect on the transverse shrinkage. So, uh, shrinkage uh, you know that is uh, transverse. So, that increases if the increase uh, uh, in increases there in the case of a root opening. Similarly, if you talk about the uh, joint design. So, uh, you know a single V will produce more transverse shrinkage than the double V joint. So, single V uh, produces more shrinkage than double V joint. Then uh, uh, there are other parameters like you have electrode diameter. So, uh, you know uh, if the electrode diameter will increase in that case the shrinkage will uh, decrease. So, shrinkage decreases as electrode dia increases. Then uh, we already uh, talked about uh, the constraint. So, the uh, degree of constraint if you are increasing the constraint basically that will be uh, having effect on the reducing that uh, transverse shrinkage. So, the uh, you know uh, increase in degree of constraint decreases uh, shrinkage that is transverse shrinkage. Then comes the uh, gaussing and repairs. Or, or, or so, so basically, uh, if you do the gaussing and repairs, so that will be increasing the uh, shrinkage. Similarly, about the pinning. So, uh, uh, if you do the pinning, then also shrinkage decreases. But the effect uh, of that is very very less, very minor. So, uh, pinning effect is also somewhat in the uh, better sense that it will try to increase uh, you know decrease the uh, uh, shrinkage. If you talk about uh, the uh, you know uh, shrinkage in the uh, fillet weld. So, when we uh, talk about uh, the you know fillet weld. So, in case of uh, fillet weld if we talk try to calculate the uh, transverse shrinkage. So, uh, you can have the example of a you know fillet weld here and you have a uh, plate in this fashion and this is your uh, fillet weld. So, in the case of uh, you know fillet weld, so what we see is that uh, we, we keep this length as a L and uh, uh, we also uh, keep you know the uh, this distance also as uh, the L this is fillet length. So, uh, length of fillet weld. So, if you talk about uh, and this is uh, T will be your uh, thickness of uh, the plate. So, in the case of fillet weld the, the transverse shrinkage delta T for the fillet weld that is uh, calculated uh, by uh, the ratio that is uh, leg of uh, fillet weld. So, this is uh, you know the uh, you know uh, uh, length of this fillet L and, and then uh, that is uh, divided by plate thickness. So, uh, so that is uh, how you calculate uh, in the case of uh, you know uh, fillet weld. 
So, this is uh, normally uh, you know for uh, uh, two continuous uh, fillet wells for T joints. Uh, then the formula uh, becomes different when you have the uh, fillet well in the lap joint. So, uh, when you have a deal with the lap joint, so in the case of uh, lap joint as you know, uh, so you have uh, a lap joint with two fillet wells if you can we, we draw. So, this is one uh, you know plate and uh, another plate is uh, you know it will be lap joint uh, with uh, this and you have the uh, fillet weld here. So, um, so that way you have this is your you know. Uh, so, this is uh, in, in this case this will be your L here and similarly uh, you have uh, you know the the L here also. And uh, this is your uh, thickness of the you know plate. So uh, you know in this case also you know uh, uh, when we talk about the uh, lap joint. So in those cases, the transverse shrinkage in case of uh, lap joint. So uh, here, what you do is we do the leg of fillet uh, and divided by the uh, thickness of plate. And uh, then uh, you know we multiply that uh, with 1.5. So uh, normally, uh, in the case of uh, you know uh, uh, these uh, lap wells, L is normally equal to T. So uh, so that way you calculate uh, you know so uh, these uh, lap joint in in the case of lap joint these. Uh, uh, you know transverse shrinkage. Now, in, in the case of uh, you know when we talk about the transverse shrinkage, so uh, uh, you know so in these cases uh, transverse shrinkage in the weld uh, it is very very much important when the uh, shrinkage of in individual weld is uh, cumulative. So, so, in those cases it becomes uh, you know uh, more uh, you know uh, important. So, that uh, you know uh, for example, you know if you talk about the uh, beam to column connections you know across the length or width you know uh, uh, of a large building. So, that is uh, you know in the example of that. So, in those cases this transverse shrinkage uh, you know. So, they are the cumulative uh, effect. So, that uh, you know uh, is uh, important. Now, if you uh, so in those cases, unless uh, if you you know you are uh, taking the allowances for that transverse uh, uh, well shrinkage. So what we normally do in those cases that uh, as we uh, usually we do that uh, by uh, uh, spreading that joint so uh, uh, so that it will uh, contract after uh, welding. So th so that allowance you have to give because uh, there will be some uh, transverse you know uh, shrinkage. So uh, so, you will have the uh, cumulative shrinkage will be there you know of the uh, several you know beam to column that uh, you know connections. So, many times it can, can be large enough to you know uh, noticeably shorten that building dimension. So, those in, in those cases when you do that uh, you know in, in, the, in those cases that cumulatively its effect will be quite appreciable. So, when you do that at that time you must have that in mind that what will be you know the cumulative uh, value of that uh, uh, shrinkage uh, uh, you know uh, after uh, you know uh, after you do said so many of uh, you know beam to column connections in that building. So, so accordingly you calculate it. Apart from that uh, as we discussed that we have other kind of uh, distortions also you have uh, angular distortions are there we have uh, bowing and bending is there longitudinal bending is there. We have uh, also to discuss about the uh, you know uh, twisting or buckling. So, that we will uh, you know study uh, and we will try to see that how they can be quantified and how you can understand uh, more about uh, you know those different kinds of uh, you know the uh, shrinkages which take place uh, in the you know welded joints. Thank you very much.